Hey guys, uh, welcome to MD's Robotronics. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how uh, to interface the infrared sensors and uh, the, the DC motors. So what I'm going to do using infrared sensors and uh, the DC motors is that I will be making a robot which can uh, either uh, avoid obstacles or obstacle detection robot or a line following robot. So for any of these cases, all that we need is uh, infrared sensors or uh, any type of uh, line sensor or color sensor. Uh, so for example, if you are if you are building a obstacle detection robot, then we need uh, either we need to use either uh, infrared sensor or uh, the ultra ultrasonic sensors. So we'll be using uh, Emily's Robotronics uh, obstacle sensor that we see here. Uh, for building our obstacle detection robot and uh, uh, and in, our, in the next we will be uh, seeing seeing another video uh, where we'll be using these uh, sensors to build a line following robot so as of now our uh, main goal is to interface uh, these infrared sensors and uh, these dc motors so there you see uh, i have uh, piled up a stack of uh, uh, robot controller boards. So these are uh, the boards that I've been working on and uh, I have been uh, assembling quite a few. So I just put it there. Uh, so as you all know, the robot M1 Emily's uh, robot controller board M1. This is a robot controller board based on uh, Atmega 8 microcontroller. So this board is uh, Arduino compatible since it uses an Atmega 8 microcontroller and also it uh, it can be programmed easily via uh, flow code AVR and uh, any any Arduino IDE you can use any Arduino IDE and you can program this uh, board using the USB ASP interface so you don't need an external programmer the USB ASP firmware is already built in the microcontroller so this uh, this act this has a USB bootloader wherein uh, the device uh, can program itself so that's the uh, coolest thing about uh, this board that you don't need uh, external uh, programming cable and this device is uh, pretty much cheap uh, compared to the Arduino board. Uh, just uh, the fact that uh, we are running on an Atmega 8 microcontroller so we can also use Atmega 328 microcontroller on the same board and we can uh, use this board as an uh, Arduino, Arduino board. Just that the shield uh, compatibility will not be there but uh, you have uh, the complete freedom to use the Arduino ID and what comes as a feature in this board is this uh, Atmega I mean is this L293 d motor driver IC so you can use this IC to drive uh, two DC motors at a time so that's the coolest thing about this so this board is uh, always uh, ready for a robotic project since uh, you can drive uh, DC motors without any problem We're using the same board the number of peripherals that you would connect to this board is uh, bare minimum so that's about that's a very quick uh, introduction about uh, this board there there are uh, uh, videos on this board which we have done before so I'm not gonna go in detail so first thing that we would uh, need is uh, the infrared sensors so we'll just take a look at the infrared sensors and what we would need uh, to use these sensors so as you see, uh, uh, these infrared sensors, it is a triple five uh, timer based uh, triple five timer with uh, TSOP 1738 combination, wherein the triple five timer uh, generates 38 kilohertz uh, frequency wave, which uh, on uh, falling on an obstacle is received uh, by this uh, TSOP 1738 uh, sensor and that's detected. So this is ambient, uh, uh, you can say, this particular sensor is uh, so I can say that this particular sensor has a very good uh, has a very good reading even when uh, even during the even uh, in daytime so what I would say is this particular sensor has a fail safe method for using it in direct sunlight Okay, this particular sensor, the very good feature about uh, this sensor is that you can use this sensor even in daylight without the sunlight's uh, infra component affecting the signal detection. So uh, that's a feature about this board and on the board you see uh, four different pins. So each 
I would uh, the first one is a five volt, the second one is a zero, uh, the third one is the output, and fourth one is disable. So disable is used to save power. So you you can either use it or uh, leave it uh, depending on depending on um, your choice. So we would in in our case we would be using only these first three uh, first three pins, which is the five volts, ground, and output and uh, we'll we'll be using two of these sensors so one on the right and one on the left and uh, using the using the sensor reading we would uh, drive the motors so motors we have uh, two dc motors and uh, these pins are, are directly plugged to the uh, robot controller board and uh, we can use it so we'll just see we'll just uh, interface We just see how we can uh, interface these sensors. So I'm gonna use uh, color coding just to make it uh, very clear to you. So red is gonna be for five volts, black is gonna be for ground, and green is gonna be for output. So the first one is the five volt pin. I, I would plug it directly to the five volt pin, and then the second, the black is ground, and second pin is ground, and I would connect the co black colored wire to the ground pin, and I would color connect the green colored wire to the output pin. And now that I have plugged uh, the infrared sensor, my red, so I need um, five volts and ground supply for my sensor. So uh, looking at the board, we have uh, five volts and ground, five volt ground and nine volt supply here, and also a five volt and zero volt pin here. So we are not gonna use this, we'll be using these for now, uh, for, uh, for this particular uh, connections. So, I would plug the five volt, the red pin to the five volt. So the second one, the second line, what you see is the five volt pin. So I will plug this red wire to the five volt pin. And I would connect the black wire to the ground pin, which is in the first row. And I'm gonna plug uh, the green one to port C bit zero, so this would be my input port. Okay, and I'll be do I'll do the same thing uh, for the other sensor as well. So I'm gonna connect the red one to five volts and plug the red wire next to the the, the middle row and the black wire. to the first row and the green wire to port C bit 1 so this is the connection that I have now very simple connection so all that I have is uh, two different infrared sensors with uh, two outputs so each of them uh, single bit output so those will be my uh, those will be the eyes uh, for my robot and now I need uh, wheels for my robot which would drive uh, my uh, robot from place to place. So this is a motor. I'm gonna plug one of these motor to these pins. So these pins that you see is where you connect your motor. So if you look closely, you see motor one and motor two. So this is where you uh, connect your motor. So I'm gonna plug it in there. So it's, it's a very simple, very easy uh, connection that you need to do. And uh, the next one goes there okay so i have my uh, connections all uh, set up and all that i need to do is uh, so i have uh, all my connections made right now so these two uh, sensors are the eyes for my robot this is my controller wherein uh, we Program, the program is written here and the controller, the motor driver controller also controls uh, the direction uh, and speed of the motors. So uh, this, this is all the connection uh, that we would need for a robot. So just that we connect these components on place and we, uh, we give wheels to these motors and assemble it on a platform, our robot is very much ready to its, for its operation. So all that we would do is either uh, use a US, I mean external power supply uh, with the connector uh, that we have. So you can plug the connector uh, to this point here. And I would also show a simple uh, connection, but uh, I will not be using the same uh, connection to uh, power up. I don't have a, a battery with me. 
So what I would do is just to show you, just to illustrate uh, the complete uh, connect, the complete connection that we need to do for a robot. I'll have uh, this dummy battery just uh, plugged in. I don't. This this battery doesn't have enough juice to run it, so I'm not going to use this battery. So all that we need to do is use the connector, and there you see uh, the connect. The connection is uh, very much complete. So this can be either a nine volts battery or a couple of uh, double A batteries connected in series. It can be a nickel metal hydride or an alkaline or zinc carbon or any kind of batteries. Or you can uh, alternatively use a 7.4 volts uh, lithium ion uh, battery pack or a lipo battery pack uh, and uh, that should uh, provide the juice for these uh, motors to spin so that's it uh, the, the, the connection is all complete uh, for a robot so this is a obstacle detection robot just that the components are not on the platform so once we have the components on the platform, our robot is very much ready. I just remember that uh, I had already uh, written a code uh, on this particular board uh, using flow code AVR. So I just uh, designed a flow chart, which uh, you would have seen in my uh, previous uh, flow code tutorial that uh, these, uh, these two pins uh, I've interfaced or uh, two sensors I've written a, uh, designed a flowchart or uh, to read the status of two different uh, sensors and depending on the status of the sensors of uh, driving the motors and these two sensors are now uh, connected to port bit 5 and port bit 6 So this is where I have uh, this. This is the code that I've written. So my code, uh, the flow code, uh, flow chart reads the status of two uh, pins. That is uh, port D bit five and uh, ports port D bit five and port D bit six. That is here. That is where I've interfaced these two. And uh, just to remember, these sensors provide an active low output. So when when the sensor detects an obstacle, it it gives a output it gives a zero signal so zero means out zero means that it has detected an obstacle so accordingly i have written the code and uh, based on the conditions the motor spin so i have uh, four different conditions here wherein uh, both the sensors are off that means one one both the sensors provide uh, high bits to the microcontroller the motor spins in the forward direction so just that we don't have obstacle at the front our robot can uh, mo keep moving now the second condition would be uh, one of the sensors i mean the right sensor uh, detects an obstacle that means uh, this sensor gives uh, active low output that is zero and this sensor is still high this, uh, this doesn't detect an obstacle and this gives active high so since there's an obstacle on the left we have to, uh, the robot uh, the robot controller can changes the direction of uh, one of the motors and uh, so that the robot turns towards left uh, towards right i'm sorry and uh, the other condition would be the sensor is active in that case uh, the robot uh, turns left and the last condition would be when both the sensors are active that means the ro our robot is uh, right in front of the obstacle so in that case the robot simply turns uh, towards either left or right we can just uh, change it accordingly either left would be our priority turn so whenever there is an obstacle the robot simply turns towards left and it keeps moving so that's a very simple logic that we have a very basic logic and uh, uh, and we're going to use that logic to drive uh, our robot controller so you can interface uh, many of these and you can add uh, more of these sensors so you can have uh, another sensor you can just plug in this sensor to the same way that we did and we can have uh, three sensors placed uh, this way so that we can actually change the direction of the robot based on uh, the sensors of uh, all based on the status of three all the three sensors so i will simply i'll plug my robot controller board uh, to a usb connection uh, and i'm gonna power my uh, board uh, with the usb power supply setup so uh, power, usb power supply we need to short uh, jumper one jumper two and jumper three and after we plug in 
I'll uh, enable my motor driver circuit so that my mo motors uh, could spin and and also as a last thing what I would want to do is uh, short uh, the 9 volts and uh, 5 volts so I'm going to use this uh, 5 volts 5 volt pin here that we have and the last row the last row of pins that we have is a 9 volt row so I'm going to connect that so that uh, my motors can spin so there you see uh, the, you saw the motors spinning or you could hear them at least so now I'm going to show you the status of uh, both the sensors and how they actually behave so as of now this condition you don't see any LED glowing that means uh, there is no obstacle in front of the sensors so both the motors are uh, uh, running in the same direction that means the motors are uh, the robot is moving forward okay you can see there's no external external connection and now i would uh, activate one of the sensors okay okay i activated this sensor there you see i have set the range uh, to a very minimum so you saw uh, one of the sensors is active and you saw the direction of one of the motors stopped okay now i'm gonna change the status i'm gonna make the other led blink other other i'm gonna activate the other sensor so you saw you see that uh, one of the motors stopped and the other motor is spinning so as the last condition when both of them are active it uh, both the sensors okay i'm gonna do this way okay so both the sensors have uh, detected obstacles and uh, now in this case I have told you that we have set the default condition wherein the motor uh, wherein the robot uh, uh, moves only in a specific direction. So that is that is all the logic uh, involved and that is a very simple uh, connections uh, that we would need uh, using this robot uh, robot controller module and uh, these infrared sensors. So it this makes your job uh, pretty easy. It makes your job uh, very simple and uh, makes your uh, robot project robotic projects uh, very easy to do and very uh, uh, it involves a lot of fun because you don't really uh, need to bug yourself with uh, learning or understanding a lot of things so this makes your job easy and this makes your implementation of your robotic projects uh, very easy that's all for today guys uh, thanks for watching